Hello everyone, I just had a client request a DVD from me and I had to review the entire process uh, to get things to work. Um, so I just want to go ahead and walk through the entire process of how to make a DVD because I've had to look at a bunch of different videos. You see I keep a list here, I'll put this in the description on different tools and different um, different things that talk about how to actually make a DVD. So the thing you need to start with is uh, I have a project folder here called Julia Recital. Rock Lips, actually, sorry. Complete Recital Backups, Julia, cool. And I have uh, one, I just I just called the original MP4s that I finished in Premiere. One, two, and three MP4, great, cool. So then we can go Media Encoder. So what you can do is you can just drag all those videos in here, easy, right? And so we have one to MP4, this is the original codec for it, and this is what we're going to. So first you need to choose, it's got its own little thing, it says DVD on it. MPEG-2, DVD, I set up one for custom, and all I did for that, I'll just put it on the default one, as I scroll down to the video settings, turn to quality, 100%. Widescreen, yes. We're in 2016. Nobody has 4x3 monitors anymore. NTSC is the American standard. VBR 2 pass. I just turned all these up because we're already scaling down to 720p. Because so we want to retain the maximum amount of quality possible. Go ahead and also turn on maximum render quality. That really helps to preserve things when scaling the video. Then you can rename the video. I just called them one, two, three again and then hit OK and then you'll hit play and that'll render out the new video so that's already done for me the files you will end up with are so for example you look at 2 2.wav and 2.xmp we don't need the uh, we don't need the xmp um, I just left it there you know, doesn't really matter next we're gonna open Photoshop okay and we're gonna get our menu set up so, a new, great, custom, uh, we just want to go ahead and set it to uh, film and video in the drop down, and we're going to 720, uh, we can skip a step scaling there. I know that this video is actually going to be 720 by 480 at the end, so I just went ahead and custom put that in, background contents, I'm going to go ahead and make that um, transparent. So the first thing you need to do, it doesn't doesn't really really matter how you set up the image. We need to go layer, new, and we need to get a new background layer. Um, I'm just going to leave this video as is so you can see all of the struggles I went through to get this. So we're just going to call it menu. Okay, great. There we go. Film and video. Cool. 80. I'm just going to see if I leave it. So, okay, so I just left it uh, white that time. So we get a, a layer called background. Don't touch the background layer. You see it's got the italics, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit T or get the text tool, which is right over here along the left side, and my font will be in black. This person's name is Julia. Cool, I'm just going to turn it black so we can see it. You can either hit escape and then V. Uh, put last name. Great, fancy font. So, uh, merge that down, actually. Sorry, back to the text tool. Last name. Make the font just a little bit smaller so it fits just a little bit better on screen. Great. V, get it centered approximately where our safety lines will be for the video. Cool. And then we're going to go text again. We're just going to call it 1, then escape. Two, great, and three, great. So then when we actually go and we click and drag these around, you see it'll automatically line up. I liked having them, I don't know why they kind of change color here. I liked having them lined up right with the end of this. Oops. So you gotta click on the layer, then move it. It's trying to line up with three. Okay, there we go. Now I'll click on two. Boom. Give it some comfortable looking space. And three. Eh, looks reasonably aligned. 
Okay, cool. So Photoshop anyways, helps you space out. You move all of them at once by clicking on the first one, holding down Shift, and then clicking on the last layer, and then you can address moving them all at once. I'm going to move them just a little bit in, a little bit of an indent, you know. Uh, I'm going to real quick investigate why this is the color it is, because it should be black. I do not know why it's black. Just going to go ahead and redo them. Even one changed. Maybe has to do with the background? I don't know. One. Great. Escape. Two. Great. Escape. Um, that alignment actually doesn't look too bad. Just going to tweak the three a little bit. Oh, that's perfect. Brilliant. Okay, great. That's uh, how we're going to set up our menu. The background layer, the special thing about the background layer being in italics is that when you get into Encore, it will actually... Um, it'll actually replace the background layer either with the image that you choose or with the video that you choose that is really so so having the background layer in italics is really important if you don't have one you can go new uh, and then background layer somewhere in here so to actually get Encore going to Creative Cloud here and we can go all apps Settings, preferences. No. Not what I needed. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so to get Encore, you have to go previous versions and install um, Premiere Pro CS6. And when you install Premiere Pro CS6, it will actually install both Premiere CS6 and Encore. I already had them installed, but leave a comment if you need any help. I called the Adobe people and they were able to tell me how to do it right, right away because I could not find any answers on the internet. It's not a software that is really used anymore, and to my knowledge, um, Adobe doesn't have a way of replacing it. So that's how you actually get Encore. So set up our menu in Photoshop. Great. One more thing. You need to right click, and you need to go convert to smart object. And later, that will let us convert these into buttons, which is really important for... Uh, for, for turning them into buttons so that we can link them. So, go ahead, file, we're going to save as, we're going to save Julia, menu, it's going to call this sample. Sample, great. Whatever, maximize compatibility, cool. Now, open up Encore. Waiting, waiting, waiting. A new project, Julia, sample, Keep it in Julia Recital. Cool. We're setting up DVD for American viewers. Great. Okay. Cool. So the first thing we got to do here, we hit the M2V for first file and wave, M2V and wave, M2V and wave. Just drag those in. Great. What Now what it's going to do, after you drag them in to, after you drag them into Encore, it's going to automatically transcode them to something that fits. So the transcoding we did before in Media Encoder, it makes it very similar or it just doesn't transcode it. So you can click on the first one, control click on the second one. You see I have two files selected. You go new timeline. Great. That's our first timeline. If I go ahead and hit play, you see I put my fade in and my fade out already on here. Do So the fade out is included in my video, so I don't have to worry about that. So then I go two and two, and I go new timeline, great. Three and three, new timeline, great. So you see I have one, two, and three down here in the bottom left, awesome. And then flowchart menu, so we can go back here where our project folder is, which is in Julia Recital, Julia Menu Sample, just drag the menu in. So I left everything black. 
So then if I hold my mouse over one, you can go select, and then it's going to give me a list of layers that appear in that area. And then you can either go object, convert to button, and then you see this turns green. So then we'll do the same. You can also hit control and B, or probably command and B on a Mac, and then select three, control B. Great. Now we've all got buttons. You see we've got some new settings over here. We don't need to worry about that quite yet. So now you see we have one, two, and three buttons. So whenever we pop the DVD in, we're telling it where, wh what is the first thing to play. By default, it's just dragged over to one because that's the first timeline I created. But if we just click and we drag over to the top project, not one, not two, not three, but onto the picture, then you see we start with the picture. Great. Then just drag in. Actually, don't drag in. Whoa! Okay. So we're going to drag this over here. Great. I'm just going to move my one timeline back down here. And so then we can drag this to here. And then, oops. Okay. You see I d had deleted one of my buttons there. So we actually need to go back to the menu thing. Select Control B again. There we go. So number one is going to go to number one. We want to break that link. Sorry, link. Sorry. I think I need to break all the links, actually. I kind of messed up here. Ah, it's breaking again. Okay. <sighs> Removing stuff from this menu is difficult. Okay, so we can right click, go over here, and then go menu remote, menu remote, delete, okay. So we have button one going to number one. Now, if I hold my mouse over button two, then we convert to a smart button, you know. You see now I've got a little arrow going over to two, great. And then three, just goes down to three. Now, sucks you can't zoom out on this panel here, it's called the flowchart. You just click and you drag, and we're going back to the top of the menu. So then you see it kind of duplicates it each time. So you can see I plug in the DVD. Great. We're going to Julia menu sample, and then we're going to number one when we click button number one. Great. And then to the end, uh, or to the back to Julia menu, the top of it where we can select everything. Now if you wanted to, you could add another button. I'm just going to change this into a, I actually didn't make that one to a smart button. But if you want to do another flow, let's say button 3 was play all. So I'm going to go back over here and I want to break that link. I'm unsure how to break the link. I'm just going to keep undoing until all my videos are removed. So I've got so if we want say say button three, we want it to be a play all button. We can drag three over to one and then one over to two. Should be able to grab one over to two. And then two over to three. And then three back hold on. Three back to the start menu. So you see, if we now if we were to hit button one, it's going to go button one, cool, play one, and then play two, then play three, and then return to the menu. So now, for setting this up as a video background, this is this was the hardest thing for me to do. So if we right click in a blank area, we should be able to select the background. We can't select the background. So click over here on the motion tab, and you go video. And I actually whipped up a, a short sample video, background video. I made a .mov because that's why I saw someone doing a video. Probably do just fine. You could probably do just fine with another um, DVD encoding. So you could just go into Premiere real quick. Real quick. How long is anybody giving me on DVD menu? Maybe two minutes. Cool. That's plenty of time for them to select. Just add another fade out and then have it loop back to the end. So. 
again, click on the uh, our menus here. Video, we click on the little swirly, drag over to background.mov. Now you see it doesn't show up, but my duration is two minutes, cool. Loop is forever. We could specify an alternate loop point if we wanted. Okay, so we've replaced the background. And because it's black, we can't see our black text. But if you go preview, you can see these weird buttons showing up. They aren't showing up right. Um, oh, yes, another really important thing. Whenever you br bring a menu in, it's going to like convert it to the project sample size. So remember, if we go uh, edit preferences, wherever the, wherever the object or the the project preferences are project settings you see remember advance no where is it 720 by 480 which is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio see 9.4 is the highest transcode setting available here and then we had also specified 16 by 9 when we set it up so before this next step which is rendering the menu on top of the background video for the menu you need to come over you click on the menu great and then you can go to properties you see after we drag that in text went black and you go 16 by 9 and that's gonna fix that so then up here right under the view button there's a preview button click on the preview button okay great can't see our buttons don't worry about it for just a sec then we have to render the menu on top of the video so I'll speed this up in post and here we go All right, and we're back, and now you can see that we have, it's in black, because I just did it because the white background, we didn't have to deal with transparency, you know, editing white text, being a little lazy here. Now we have this set up. Great. So, now that that's set up, we can go back to our flowchart and double check that our buttons are all set up correctly. Removing stuff from this menu is a turd. There we go. End action. It's on the end action. So if we go delete. Okay. So button one goes to number one. Button two down to button three. Button three down to number three. Three is already linked back to the menu. Great. Two, just click drag back to the menu. Great. One, click drag back to the menu. Great. That's how we set up the DVD. So DVDs can play. We got all the buttons. Now let's go ahead and do our sample preview, our preview again. And for some reason, our buttons are not working. That sucks. I don't know why. go back to our menu here try to hunt out our buttons 
There we go. Select three. Three. Yeah, so you can see down here in the layers just how things are set up. So, yeah, this is how we make stuff a button. So that's all set up right. Monitor just shows us what's going on. Let's try preview from here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try... Nope, can't. Again, live troubleshooting. I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to try deleting that. And then doing the preview again. It's looking for the black background. All right, so working with good old Encore. Just going to remove the background. Julie menu sample, PSD. Great, just so we can see again. We'll go ahead, right click, select one. Control B for button, right click, select two. Control B for button, right click, select three. Control B for button. Great. Flow chart. Drag this right here. Boom. Starts. One goes to one. Two goes to two. Three goes to three. Looks a little funny, but it's all lined up right. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Two goes back to this. Okay, there we go. Two, back to two, two, back to menu. Great. And three to three, three back to menu. Okay, so we're all set up. I'm just going to go over one more thing real quick. So if we go to one, this is actually a uh, musical piece with multiple movements. So we can just scrub through, find where she stops for a bit, which is right here. And we can add a chapter marker going boom. So, this, so it automatically adds chapter one then chapter two, and then it actually just picks right up. Uh, this is in the last little bit here. Well, just, just for example sake, we'll just say right there. So, video motion, try this again. Julia, background video. Try the preview again. Good, our buttons are working. Oh, before we render, remember, over to here, 16 by nine, double check. Our buttons are working. You see, I got the little thing there. We'll go ahead and render again. Okay, so we've got that rendered. Our buttons are still not working. I don't know why. We'll click on our menu, go edit menu in Photoshop, and we'll just double check that everything is all good there. Yeah, so this is a smart object. Try again. S. It's going to save our changes to the menu. Basically re-imported it, imported it 16 by 9 flowchart.
I'm going to re-import the menu again, just so we can see what we're doing. 1, B, 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 flowcharts. Link chapter three. Great. Great. So our buttons are working and click our menu, motion, video. Try one more time. Background. Oops. Let me go back. Sixteen by nine. Just going to go ahead and specify that video again. Buttons are not working, even though our flowchart is set up. Okay, looks like our buttons did work the first time. See, first video starts. All right, this button executes our end action, which means it's gonna take us back to the menu. Great. So I'll click on one again, because that's where we put the chapters. This allows us to input the chapters and then skip to it. Now you can see at the end of that first movement of that piece. Great. And we start the three. So back to this, click on three, brilliant. And you can see the quality of this is really not at all too bad. And it's really it's set up to those first render settings we did with the, uh, with the transcode in Adobe Media Encoder and then specifying our project settings to just the highest. And you still saw it only took me two minutes uh, to render out that DVD. I really hope that this video serves as a resource for everyone out there creating DVDs for anyone. Good luck.